Hey, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Inclusive Networker Podcast, where we make network marketers, small business owners, and solopreneurs aware of blind spots that could be keeping their networks and businesses small. We give them tips and simple, practical tools to make their businesses more inclusive, and we teach our listeners how to build inclusive communities that support diverse customers, team members, and business partners. So if you want to authentically build relationships with diverse communities of customers or business partners, you are in the right place. But be warned, you will be challenged. But here's the thing, you won't be judged. I'm your host, Dr. Ramona. I'm a speaker, coach, consultant, public health professor, wife, mom, and a fierce challenger of broken systems that keep people from reaching their highest potential. I'm so excited to be with you on your journey to becoming an inclusive networker. Let's jump right in. Welcome, welcome to this week's episode of the Inclusive Networker Podcast. This is your host, I am Dr. Ramona, and who are we calling into conversation today? Well, it is Kiersey Garden, and I am so, so very excited to have Kiersey Garden as my guest. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about her so that we can jump right in. So Kiersey Carden is a holistic online business mentor. She's certified neurolinguist programming master and my tech coach trainer and speaker based in Surrey, England, and the host of the chart topic self-help podcast, Transform with Christy Garden. For over six years, Kirsty has worked with hundreds of aspiring and current female entrepreneurs, putting them in the environment for success and confidently growing profitable aligned businesses online. Kirsty has featured in, has been featured, let me start that over. Kirsty, <laughs> it just says Kirsty has featured, so I it was a word that was left out of your bio. Okay. <clears throat> no worries. Okay. All right, team, start back here. Kirsty has been featured in numerous magazines as well as co-authoring a best-selling book. Kirsty very much is a product of her work growing up on the poverty line and facing many challenges herself to creating the life and business she always dreamed of. Kirsty believes true transformation comes from our environments and for us to change, we must change the environment that we are in first. So Kirsty, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Inclusive Networker Podcast. I am so very excited to have you as my guest today. I'm excited to be here too. I love your energy. I'm, I'm just making you more excited. I'm like ready to go. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. All right. <laughs> all right. So my first question to all my guests is always, what is your lens? Because I think that this is so important for us to understand why we think the way we do. Why do we do the things that we do? So tell us a little bit about your lens. Yes. I absolutely love this question. I think like, God, if we start every conversation with this question, wouldn't we have so much more understanding for how everybody yes. is? It's yeah. such a good, really, really good question. So I love it. So, so my lens, so I come from, I come from quite a, a poor background, a really diverse background. So my mum's an immigrant. Um, and again, she comes from a, a mixed race background. Actually, my, my, uh, granddad is from South Africa. He's mixed race. My, my, um, my dad was adopted um, and they both actually had like mental health issues as well. I'm one of five. Mm. So I came from a background where I really understood that both my parents had been through a lot to get to where they are today. And I grew mm -hmm. up in an area. So I'm from England, as you can probably tell from my accent, <laughs> I was grew up in and around London. So I was grew up in a really like diverse background like we have mm -hmm. like asian people black people white people, like people from everywhere so for yeah. me um i was grew up so, like it was very inclusive and it wasn't until i was around 16 when i moved away from home that i suddenly started seeing that not everywhere was like how i mm -hmm. grew up right the family like um most of my family like all my nieces and nephews they're all mixed race i come from a very diverse background so i always like was around so many different people growing up Mm -hmm. so much different food so many different cultures and then when i moved to the country when i went to college was when i started seeing oh actually not everyone lives the way i live and i think for some people it's the other way around right but for me it was actually starting to see how different people thought how 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 um secluded and how different um people can be like so it was mm -hmm. just i've yeah i think my 
I think my lens and for me, I always say about how when you change your environment, you change your life. Right? I think we are all products yeah. of our environments. And though there were great things around the environment I grew up in, like I love that it was really inclusive and multicultural and I was around lots of different people. There was also the side that my parents also had their own mental health issues, um, mm -hmm. quite like my mum's quite big ones that I was around a lot I was one of five everyone that I grew up around was obese um people had mental health issues which has been passed on to other members of my family so I kind of knew uh, around 16 that for me to change I had to change my environment so that's when I went mm. to college I stayed away I went to university and things kind of changed from there and things that I wasn't even aware of so I found out when I was 17 that I was dyslexic no one ever picked up on that right because of the environment I I was in no one really noticed there wasn't that focus on education or focus on on kind of me but then that, mm -hmm. those things got discovered and um you know my education was really kind of looked after after that point and things like that so yeah for me um a really different a, a really uh eclectic experience of different people i've been around a lot of different mental health issues like i've been around um yeah, like a, a very diverse background, which I suppose has kind of led me to where I am today and what I do today as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you talk about your, your family background and, and mm -hmm. all of the different mental health issues and the environment that you were in, that, mm -hmm. that seems that it's the way that you may, it, that might have led you to um, neuro-linguistic programming, right? Yeah. And so yeah. tell us what neuro-linguistic programming is, how that relates to business and inclusivity and, and all of the things that you do together. Yeah. So I kind of really wanted to understand why am I like, as far as how I used to think compared to my family, right? Like they weren't mm -hmm. that ambitious. Um, you know, again, they were all obese. I went the other way around. Actually, I actually ended up being bulimic and I had anorexia mm -hmm. as a teenager. Obviously, you know, got through that and stuff. But the way that uh, I, I felt different, like I was different to them, the way that they fought and stuff. So that was where I wanted to try and understand, you know, because we can be born in this environment, but feel like, but, but be completely different, right? Or, or think in a different way. And it's like, well, why mm -hmm. do I think differently right and and how can I change my environment to kind of alter the life I want the education all that type of stuff so it was really trying to understand like human psychology behavior how we are um you know like I used to do things where I'd visualize things that they would happen you know and it was like oh what mm -hmm. is this all about right so with mm -hmm. like NLP understanding about psychology and mindset and that part of things it was really digging in and really understanding the science behind it and how we kind of uh, can use our minds that, you know, the, the, all the things, right? Like I talk about this a lot in my podcast, like environmental change. And it, you know, it's all the things from like the people we surround ourselves with, the practices we do day to day, the place that we're in, the physical environment, the psychology, um, our physical body, our physical energy, right? And actually being able to change those things, we can alter everything. And I think it's the mm -hmm. same for business, right? If you want to be successful in business, you need to get around the right people, the right environment, you need to do the right practices. And the same for our mental health and for our confidence and for our energy as well. So yeah, it kind of, um, it kind of, I suppose, started from that and that wanting to understand myself, why I was different and how I can to things and not just for me but also for my son as well I saw mm -hmm. like I had an older sister and I saw how some of these kind of genetic things were kind of being passed on right I think when things happen like immigration like my mum was pulled out of school when she was uh, nine years old and she had to work like at a really young mm -hmm. age and then she was pulled away from her country at 15 she couldn't speak the language and I understand from a psychological point of view like how that how distressing that must have been for her and how at disadvantage that put her when she had to move away from everything. And mm. then those things and her, how her, she reacted to that and how that affected her got passed on to her children. Right. And then, you know, and it's like stopping those patterns. So I was really aware if I'm going to have a child, I don't want any of the stuff to be passed on, which I saw it start to get passed on with my nieces and nephews as well. So it's like changing those things for the next generation too, mm. as well as yourself mm -hmm. and as well as everyone around, right? Which is why I'm a mentor, a coach, um, specifically for women and really helping them change those things so that they can change it. And it's this kind of um, ripple effect, right? And I see this all the time. Mm -hmm. You do something, you teach people something and it ripples out, it ripples out, it ripples out. So, you know, when you talk about, you know, networking and neural network, like if there can be, if you do it right, 
there can be this incredible ripple effect, you know, because we can't change the background we're from and whatever has happened before us, right? Like it's mm-hmm. going to affect people, but we can make some changes and those changes can create this incredible ripple effect on so many people as well. Oh, I love this. And so as we're thinking about this diversity of thought, these, this diversity mm-hmm. of experiences, how do we really look for this in our businesses? And then when we do see different people with different, um, you know, like I said, types of background, different um, mental um, health, all of that, how do we make sure that we recognize that one? And then what steps do we take to what kind of action? Right. Can we take when we do recognize that there is difference of thoughts or a difference in, in mental? Uh, yeah. Health? Yeah. I think this is the thing is first thing is, is, is being like changing up your environment to be around it. Right. And I think this is the great mm-hmm. thing about social media. It, no one can be naive anymore. Right. Like, yeah, some people might have grown up in a country and only been around certain people, but it's not like that anymore. Right. We mm-hmm. have access to travel. We have access to social media, to the internet where we can actually learn from other people. So I think there's a few things like, especially with personal development, like it's really important to constantly be like developing yourself personally, your mindset, understanding things, but also making sure you're doing that from a variety of different people. Right. I think there are a lot of people and there's, you know, and a lot of them are like, white males let's just be honest right Mm -hmm, that write mm -hmm. books that that share the literature that tell people how they need to think and feel and and talk a lot and that they're speakers you know (laughs) i don't know if my husband have a joke sometimes because there's been so many times we've had speakers and um read books where you know it's a right a white man who's been in a car crash and every book starts like that we're like oh my god if i hear another Mm -hmm. white guy (laughs) <laughs> you know being in a car crash but you hear but then you're getting into it but you're listening and you're hearing from the same person so it's like making sure uh-huh. that the social media that you're you're, you're watching listening to mm-hmm. the podcast you listen to this is why i love podcasts because i think they're so they're so good to hear different conversations and different people mm-hmm. not the same stuff right um the books that you read they need to be from a variety of different people from a variety of different backgrounds that's mm-hmm. how you're going to really understand and get into the mindset of different people and it's gonna and again by doing that you're opening up your own um your own mindset your own understanding of things you're able to understand Mm -hmm. things from a different perspective whereas what you know if you're just only in your own little world it's kind of like blinkers on right Mm -hmm. so it's hard for you to really kind of understand that so i think just a simpler thing of like thinking about who you're following and you know Mm -hmm. looking through your social media feeds what are you actually seeing you know so many of us it's altered just to certain people that we're used to seeing and it's like changing that up who else can you hear from who else can you know are you are you interested who else can you bring into that from all types of different backgrounds that's how you're going to be more um inclusive and i think also your mm-hmm. confidence builds because i think sometimes with some people if you're not used to just being around lots of different people that can seem unknown and scary and it's like oh how do yeah. i communicate am i do i look like i'm just doing it for the sake of it or something like that so you by just listening and observing at first you're going to get a better understanding of people and i think that builds your confidence as well and again mm-hmm. like i say it just helps you just see things from a wider perspective too Yeah. And it's so interesting that you're saying this because I'm always talking about the customer journey. And often we don't think about the sales experience from Mm -hmm. other people's experiences that don't look like us, right? Or other people's perspectives, right? And so if we think of things only from a white male perspective, and then we, we develop our sales experience, around a white male perspective yes. or in just one perspective, right? We are all, always on this ideal client. Then we mm. lose so many people because even though a, a lot of times that what marketers say, we can tell that our products to anybody with skin and hair. Well, that's, that's true. But if you haven't thought about the sales process yeah. from those different perspectives, you're going to lose somebody along the way because you haven't thought about what their unique needs are, right? And so what you're saying is so um, in line with that because you really have to to think about differences in thought as well. Yeah, and you have to think about how you come across on on social media for your content Mm -hmm. because content's what connects with other people, you know? And Mm -hmm. I know from myself, like I've, I've, even though I focus mainly on women, I have women from all different backgrounds, all different races, 
you know, gay women, straight women. And I think that's because of my content and how I come across people mm -hmm. know my values and they know what I stand for and what I stand, stand against. And I think again, people will be attracted to you and come to you and create conversations with you if mm -hmm. they understand what you are about and the kind of person you are and how you do things. Cause that's what makes you stand out to all the, the other people as well. Right. And likewise, mm -hmm. you do it the same with others. I think it's really important as well that you connect with people that have the same kind of ethics and values and stuff as you so you want to make sure that you know you are listening to people who have the same mindset right who mm -hmm. uh, who are about inclusivity who are ethical who have the same thing because then you're going to see more of those kinds of people you know I, I i i get totally turned off if i see anything that looks dodgy or makes me feel uncomfortable or i see people sharing mm -hmm. certain things you know so it's like being aware of who you're subscribing to what you're listening to mm -hmm. because what you listen to daily what you see daily that's what becomes you right you know well yeah. you know we, we are and our network and who we surround ourselves with and our thoughts and our ideas are generated from everything that we kind of pick up and see day to day so it's really being mm -hmm. aware of that because it's social media is so powerful right podcasting mm -hmm. is so powerful it like what you listen to and exposed to creates the narrative that you hear in your head day to day so it's being yeah. really aware of that and also creating it yourself not just relying mm -hmm. on others but being like what do i want to stand for what am i about what kind of people do i want to attract to me and how can i make sure that that's clear that i'm that kind of person so that you will attract those kinds of people that they they you know what i mean so you, you it, it just needs to be clear as well from your perspective you can't sit there quietly mm -hmm. right in the corner yeah. just like expecting people to come and know what you're about and know that you want this <laughs> and that you are inclusive right if you're not sharing that you know because you are mm -hmm. what you do not what you think you know so it's what you're putting out there is what people are going to be attracted to you know just like when you yeah. invite me i get lots of invites and podcasts all the time and i don't do majority of them but when i saw you know i looked at your social media profile and i saw what you represent and what you're about i was like i really like that like that aligns to my values and to what i mm -hmm. do so i want to be on your podcast i want to speak do you know what i mean i want to take the time to be here because it's really clear on your on your profile and what you sent to me so likewise everyone needs to do that because otherwise mm -hmm. people you're going to lose people so yeah, I feel like I'm yeah. Like <laughs> also, well, thank you for that. And <laughs> um, and so as we think about this idea of, I think this is one of the issues. People want to stick with their values, and remember, you know, we're going back to our lens, right? Our mm. lens is is strong. <laughs> it is Thank saying you. this is this is what I learned growing up. These are the things that I was taught. This is what I believe, but now you're telling me to go and let all this other stuff, you know, enter my mind and let me look at all these other people's perspectives. And I don't want to get away from what I believed and what I grew up with. And so how do we help people to navigate that process of, yeah, I'm sticking to my values and the things that I've, I've learned that I really want to continue with, you know, those deeper values. But then I also need to broaden my lens so how yeah. do I do that and stay true to myself but also broaden my lens and, and bring in other yeah. perspectives I suppose the first thing is why why do you want to do it in the first place right like mm -hmm. when you do anything yeah. it's like understanding your why so like the more reasons that you've got to do it the the more you're going to do it so it's just it's understanding your own motives around it so that you feel mm -hmm. in alignment to it so you feel connected to it it doesn't feel like you're just doing it as like some tick box activity because it shouldn't feel like that it should be like mm -hmm. connected to that and it's also about like you know you can still stay true to your values what you grew up with uh, but still diversify your thinking because the only way you're going to mm -hmm. grow is by doing new things, is exposing yourself to new ideas, to new people. Like that's the only way that you're going to think in a different way. If you, the thing is, if you don't want to grow, if you don't want to be inclusive, it's like then this isn't for you, is it? So it's like mm. the whole thing is you're here, you're listening to this, you're doing this because you know you want to grow a, a, a network, you want to be inclusive. That you know that's probably part of your moral fiber, right, and your values. So therefore it's an alignment to who you are as a core, mm -hmm. right? And it's it's about growth, you know, because if you sit there just going, well, I only know what I know and I'm only going to think this way, then you're not going to grow. You're not going to develop yeah. in, in business or personally. So it's going back to, I think, your why around it, connecting to that because that then helps you. And also knowing that anything new is going to feel uncomfortable, right? Like mm -hmm. it's this whole thing like, 
or you know, there's a lot online about you know being in alignment and it should all feel good and it should all be flowing and comfortable and but it's that isn't how it is because the way it's we not. created yeah is that is to be comfortable like our body anytime we do anything different it makes us feel uncomfortable because it's like oh mm-hmm. this is dangerous this is new right it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just, it means you're developing. It's actually a good sign, you know, if you feel uncomfortable with something because it's stretching you. And then once you grow, it becomes normal, you know? So mm-hmm. I think of any of this, it's just understanding that it's about why and that it's about growing. And any part of growth is going to feel a bit uncomfortable, but that's the whole thing is like, Doing that gets you through to the other side and it helps you develop as a person, as a, as a network marketer, as, as a business person, like, because you get to learn things. And I also think, think even bigger than this, like, think about the next generation, think about your legacy, think about, you know, what you want to leave behind, what you want your kids to think and feel and what you want people mm-hmm. around, because there is this massive ripple effect. Because I see this all the time with my clients, like they grow and develop and then they do things and they develop other people. And I see their testimonials and then I see what people like they're doing for other people that I couldn't do. And you're just like, wow, you're, you're creating this a massive, amazing effect on different things. But it starts always with you, right? You mm-hmm. being the change that you want to see. And I think, yeah, I think that's yeah. kind of it. I've advanced it in different ways. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And and one thing that we all have to get comfortable with and you know com- comfortable with understanding is that mm-hmm. there are some things in everybody's life that we have to unlearn. Yes. So even though we were taught a lot of things about mm-hmm. a lot of different people, there are things that we need to unlearn. And yeah. so it's Definitely. so important for us to look at a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different things, hold yeah. true to the values. Yeah. But realize that there's some things that, that we maybe were, we had a blind spot to, yeah. and we've got to unlearn that and get comfortable yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. And I think the easiest way as well to like unlearn things is just to be around other people with different perspectives. It rubs off, mm-hmm. like it rubs off. It's easier than trying to like, you know, sit there and try and reprogram your mind and try and say a million affirmations or change it. It's just getting into the environment where people are already thinking in a different way because then Mm -hmm. you can be challenged they can be challenged you you, it just it rubs off doesn't it so i think Mm -hmm. it's um actually putting yourself out there networking being with other people that is going to be one of the it's going to be one of the easiest ways really to develop and see things from a different perspective you know um, because Mm -hmm. you are who you surround yourself with yeah so what else should the inclusive networker audience know about neuro-linguistic programming? What are some things that we've just got to understand about this process? Mm, let me think what well, I haven't said already, because I've kind of picked up on a, on a lot of things. There, there was something okay. I did want to, there was something I wanted to kind of pick up from like, um, from like, you know, things that you need to do, you know, things that you need to okay. be aware of as, a, as an inclusive marker as well, that, Again, because it, it, there is the whole like making sure that you're around other people, traveling to other mm-hmm. environments, being around different people. But also, I think you need to be aware of, um, you know, who you, you buy from and who, you, you know, you're surrounding yourself with as well. Because I think, you know, if you want mm-hmm. to be inclusive and you want to demonstrate those values, I think we all have to be really aware of like what we spend our money on, like what we invest in. There's mm-hmm. an energetic connection to it, right? Like we're saying we are uh connected to this that this is a value to us right so i think doing the research as someone that's creating a network of different people or just Mm -hmm. buying things online investing with things online i think being aware of like the ethics of the companies that you are actually um connecting with i remember like quite a few years ago there's a place not far from where i live called the co-worth it's this really beautiful massive um like kind of manor hotel and i I used to Mm -hmm. go there and then i found out that the sultan of Brunei. Um, owned it and um he basically he basically from his country he kills gay people and i was like oh. what the hell like mm-hmm. there is no way i'm supporting a business that has any even though you know you feel bad because all the people that work there and it's their job they aren't connected to him but you know it's there's that that whole connection back to something that again it's unethical it's immoral i don't mm-hmm. want to be associated or putting my money investing my time investing my energy into that so i think we also have to be aware of like how we contribute ourselves in what we do not only what we say people we surround ourselves with but also what we invest in our money our time right so just that Mm -hmm. little kind of i think that extra thing because we're all connected of just being aware of like how we are 
yeah, like spending our money, where is it going? What, who are the people that we're, because we are basically contributing to that. If we're, even if we're not, uh, you know, even if it's not like something that you'd be aware of, it's like, you have to get aware, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and that is so true that, that, that where you spend your time and your money is energy and that energy Mm -hmm. is being connected to whatever it is. And so if that thing is not inclusive or that thing doesn't have the, doesn't hold the same value that mm-hmm. you do, then there's a misalignment there and there, exactly. that's an issue. And so, yeah, that is so good. That is so important. Yeah. Um, so Kirstie, where can we find you? What is your next big project? How can it help the inclusive networker audience? How do we stay connected sure. with you? Sure, sure. So um, my podcast is probably the easiest place to find me. So it's called Transform with Percy Carden. So again, it is about environmental change, how you can change your environment to change your life. So it's all about transforming your life and your business for environmental change. Um, My next big project um, I'm launching next month. So I've had um, an accredited online business training academy for over four years. I'm revamping it. It's kind of the next version um, in January when I relaunch it. Um, and that um, that I'm going to do a free training for that actually next month. So that's that's available. Mm-hmm. It's a CPD accredited program as well. So that's my next big project that's kind of happening. Um, and yeah, but apart from that, it's it's I'd say the the podcast is the best place to kind of find me. And like you say, I think it's making sure that you're listening to different things from different opinions of different people is really going to is really, really going to help you think differently and experience different things and get different perspectives on things just like this podcast is doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Inclusive Networker. And thank you so much to my fabulous guest, Kirsty Carden. You will find her information in the show notes and we will see you on the next episode of the Inclusive Networker. Bye. Bye. Hey, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Inclusive Networker Podcast, where we make network marketers, small business owners, and solopreneurs aware of blind spots that could be keeping their networks and businesses small. We give them tips and simple, practical tools to make their businesses more inclusive, and we teach our listeners how to build inclusive communities that support diverse customers, team members, and business partners. So if you want to authentically build relationships with diverse communities of customers or business partners, you are in the right place. But be warned, you will be challenged. But here's the thing, you won't be judged. I'm your host, Dr. Ramona. I'm a speaker, coach, consultant, public health professor, wife, mom, and a fierce challenger of broken systems that keep people from reaching their highest potential. I'm so excited to be with you on your journey to becoming an inclusive networker. Let's jump right in.